The world of artificial intelligence has been revolutionized by the boom in deep learning technology. Here at Model AI, we're looking at how to use this in a way that will support game developers to do their best work. But it's not the first time machine learning has impacted games. Far from it, the legacy of machine learning in video games goes back much farther than you might think. When we think of artificial intelligence for video games, we typically think of opponents or adversaries, characters who are designed to defeat us and give us a challenge. But quite often, AI can be used to create more realistic simulations of human behavior. These little automatons may be designed to replicate a real-world phenomenon or require our guidance to help them achieve their goals. We teach them, we nurture them, and maybe even develop some personal attachments along the way. While a lot of this is driven by the character art and the animation, it's also driven by the decisions these characters make. And some of these seemingly innocuous problems have been the home of early innovations in AI for games, at a time when technology and the hardware wasn't really ready to handle the problems they were facing. One groundbreaking game is Creatures from back in 1996. It's a game developed around an artificial life system. Players had to nurture little creatures known as Norns, and as a player, you raised them and could help train them to learn to survive. Each Norn used an artificial neural network that was being updated and tweaked the more you interacted with it. This means that the Norns began to learn new habits and change behavior over time. This isn't something you can achieve easily using the type of AI usually deployed in game productions. Using that type of AI, you would have to write lots of rules or logic to say what can be learned, when and how. Using a neural network can mean the Norns learn of their own accord based on their own desires and while it might be less optimal, it makes it feel much more natural. Neural networks are such a huge part of machine learning these days that we sometimes forget that a lot of games were experimenting with them decades ago. One of the most famous examples is Black and White, the God Simulator by Lionhead Studios in 2001. It had players teach giant monsters to do their bidding. These monsters had to learn from your actions what you wanted them to do, as you acted as god over tribes of the new world. But in many cases, the neural networks are really shallow, nowhere near the size of those used today. It meant it could be even tuned by hand and didn't need like an algorithm to train them. Comparatively, deep neural networks contain thousands of neurons for processing and millions of connections. Training this is a much more demanding process, but it means the resulting output at the end has the capacity to be much more intelligent than what we were seeing back in black and white. But it's not just neural networks, of course. Other simulation games such as The Sims or even modern titles like City Skylines present really challenging problems for simulating human behavior. The Sims know there are a lot of different things they can be doing in the world, but letting them figure out which one is best for them is a lot of work. Therefore, The Sims need to have their implicit wants and needs and calculate which activities in the world make sense for them, which could be going to sleep, grabbing something to eat, or socializing with friends, or finding a partner. Meanwhile, other aspects of our day-to-day -day lives can become overwhelming for AI simulations to capture. For example, having the thousands of citizens in city skylines figure out how to go to work or to a school, all within an ever-growing metropolis with a myriad of transportation options. But it's funny how big an impact this kind of work can have on actual AI research years later. Google DeepMind's co-founder Demis Hassabis was the lead AI programmer in black and white. Meanwhile, Richard Evans, who is also a researcher at DeepMind, not only worked in black and white, but also developed the AI for The Sims 3. This highlights not just how the challenges faced in AI can influence a variety of fields, but also that video games will continue to be an exciting problem space for researchers and for game developers in the coming years. Well, that's good news, because it means we'll still be in a job, and we can continue our series on the history of AI for games, so be sure to catch us again soon for the next chapter.